Appley's grind or Appley's compression test is different from the patellofemoral grind test. To do it, you flip the person onto their tummy. And this test, I don't mind. It doesn't. You don't see people do it a whole, whole bunch, but it's just easier to control things. And this one, I'm going to flex her at various angles. The textbook says 90 degrees, but I do different angles because it puts stress on different parts of the meniscus. The more flexed a person is, the more the meniscus pulls posterior, excuse me, towards um, um, yeah, posteriorly, but then also superiorly in this particular position. So it's not going to have much load. I'm going to have more load on the anterior portions of it. So to do an Apley's grind or an Apley's compression, now I can put my weight-bearing surface on it, and now I can do my rotations like Jason was just demonstrating. It's much easier if I want to, if I think I feel a click medially, now I can load that joint and feel it. Can't really hold varus and valgus that well, but as I told you, I think that's hard to do. I personally like this better than McMurray, but I can't defend that in the literature to you. Okay? And the last one is Thessaly's test. This study was in 2009. Two different articles published on it. I can even demonstrate this one, but you're going to have a patient stand on one leg. First of all, you want to know, does that hurt, right? If that hurts, what are you suspecting? A compressive disease, which can be meniscal, more commonly is arthritic, and can be patellofemoral, because it also has compressive disease. We're going to talk about that next week. So you don't want them locked in full extension. You want them at about 5 degrees, and you just ask them to rotate medially laterally, they don't define a whole lot, but about a 20 or 30 degree arc of motion. Then you repeat the test at about 30 to 40 degrees, having them load the joint. It's really what we did up here, only much more potentially traumatic to the patient. And as you saw on this morning's slides, it has a very high degree of accuracy, but it's pretty darn threatening to your patient. And you got somebody with something you're suspecting, you can create a meniscal tear. It's not likely that it happens just by doing that test. But you should try it and see if you can do it.